Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Sandro De Bono um, from Malta. You cannot miss me because I'm the only one from Malta around, so that's a safe bet. I'm a curator. For those who never heard about what a curator is, it's, you can Google it. it it's spelled C-U-R-A-T-O-R. And I'll be talking <laughs> about my latest experience um, in Malta, which I've also presented elsewhere. It's not about the experience per se, but it's about the message I would like to share, which is very simple. It's not about how big you are, it's not about your institution, it's not about the money or the funding, it's about believing in the fact that change can happen, is necessary, and has to happen. Can I have the first slide, please? Yeah. I'll be talking about the audience, because sometimes as curators, we tend to forget about the audience. And I'd like to start off my sharing the few thoughts I, I've, um, I've been sharing with you with these two images. Um, it's, the lower one is an image of a, of a concert hall with an orchestra in place. And the second one is a run-of-the-mill image of an exhibition. If we had to label either, we wouldn't label that as a concert, as a performance, but probably it makes sense to be a rehearsal because there's no public present. The orchestra is just playing on its own in an empty space. And I would be very upset if no one was listening to what I had to share this morning. The second image is an of the mill image which is tagged as an exhibition, a preview, but the audience is much less hinted um, when it comes to the exhibition. We always, we always take it for granted that an exhibition has to have an audience and does have an audience, whilst on the other hand, the concert hall does not, and we would say that's a rehearsal. So where is the audience in all of this? Second slide. I'd like to share in what I believe in, which is essentially that museums are cultural spaces. And I don't think it's about programming or special programming or addressing niche audiences. I think it's about empowering participants who can aspire to become inhabitants of the museum space, of the cultural space. These are images which belong, which come from one of the projects that we've, that we've been working on over the past years. It's about getting in touch with locals. It's about getting them to the cultural space, to the museum space. They had never been before. It's about helping them choose according to their set criteria of values, not about art history or aesthetics or anything, but it's about the value that they see or that they can extract in their choice of artwork. And then they would be empowered for us to share their choice and their comment, the reason why they chose that image with, with the local community. And there's an image of someone who has just stopped with his truck to, to, to get fuel, to fill up his, his tank, and he's looking at a poster. I mean, these are not staged. These are some, this is something which happened, which can happen, and which has, I've seen people who've never been to, to a museum before, who had never even dreamt of speaking about art and acknowledging art as a resource to connect and to make it happen. Second slide. Yesterday we were having a, quite an interesting conversation and my question was when, I, I'm always intrigued by people turning up in front of the, of the masterpiece. And I mean, if you, for those of you who've been to the Louvre in front of the Mona Lisa, people just want to snap a photo, even if they probably have a better photo in their books at home, or they can buy postcards, but it seems that everyone wants to 
record the moment, capture that minute, have the evidence that he has ticked the right box. I think that museums, we should aspire to be much more than that. I think we should, we should aspire to connect people like this lady here, who discovered a portrait um, of a friend of hers who had traveled the Mediterranean by boat, had almost lost his life, risked his life to travel to a safe haven, which is considered to be Europe. And she discovered that he was still alive and she took her selfie with him and in some way or another, we got to know much later that she actually, she actually managed to get in touch with him and sent him this image. And I think this is what we are essentially for, we should aspire to be, not have the odd program for special needs, for niche audiences, but to empower these type of connections, these type of relations every day. Let's keep in mind one very important thing. Carol Duncan speaks about museums as ritual, but ritual is more often than not a collective experience, not a single experience. Next slide. These are other stories as well, which come from, from the same experience. Someone who discovered his mum, a portrait of his mum in the collection, and he had never seen, he seen her before because he, her, his mum had passed away when he was still a little child. That's also a human story. And someone else who crossed the Mediterranean and discovered a painting of, a, of rough seas, of Grand Harbor in Malta, and immediately connected with that. And these are other stories that museums, that we are, in a way, I believe, due to bound to empower, to let people engage with, and to help people to make use of collections as a resource for everyday life. Next slide. This is essentially what I believe museums should be. And this is a, an image from our gallery where we are juxtaposing a contemporary art piece with a historic painting of a, of a battle scene. And the contents of the, of the red cabinet um, are drawings which speak about violence inspired by religion and belief. And a few days ago, um, a student turned up at the museum. He's reading for a degree in, in media studies. And he sent us this, this piece. It inspired him, this juxtaposition inspired him to think about the relevance of the argument that we are presenting in our galleries today. And it's something which happened in our recent, very recent past. I think that museums, irrespective of where they are or who their audiences are, can really be spaces for participants to acknowledge and to use as a resource. There are two comments that I would like to share with you because in the museum world, we've been talking a lot about participatory um, programming, co-curation, and perhaps there are very little of us who are talking about the aftermath. What will this lead to? And I think it will lead to a more polyphonic art historical narrative. In my case, I'm into art history. This is an art museum, which is beyond the value, the economic value of artworks, but much more connected to the significance and the rel relevance of the art piece to the personal, to the human. And this obviously will mean that the structure of knowledge might be changing in the foreseeable future. We've structured knowledge in a way which has not changed since the beginning of the 19th century, and perhaps social media and the rest of the platforms that we're using every day and the way we're much more connected can help to create new narratives that are more connected with local communities. Thank you, that are more connected with local communities.